Okay, so we'll talk about we're, we're talking about shoring and the principles or the simplicity of what it does to facilitate buildings or building underground, I should say, in a constrained area, constrained site, in an urban site where there's no room to move beyond the site, beyond the property. So if I draw a house and the house is on the ground and it has a basement under the ground, I clearly have to dig a hole under the ground to put the garage in to build these walls, which usually have foundations of some kind. And usually I have to dig a hole bigger than the foundation in order to construct it. And then I have to put the dirt back in the ground, and maybe not in this case, but I'd build it right on the ground to facilitate constructing these walls, which are usually form concrete. So on a site, we'll put in a street in an intersection, and I have a building going in here, and I've got, and I'll take, now I'll take the streets out and talk about that I have buildings next door, perhaps, that are very close to this new building. And I do not have the ability to cut, move, construct beyond the prop, beyond the building far enough to facilitate getting this hole. So what I have to do is build a hole, a very neat, perfectly cookie cut hole, exactly the size of the basement I need, and go down vertically along that edge, having a very sharp cliff, if you will, all around the perimeter without scooping out the dirt in this plant. So I have to go straight down, drive straight down. In order to do that, this dirt along here has to be held back due to old-fashioned gravity, not create the slope. I've got to keep this dirt now, since I'm keeping this dirt against the edge, I've got to keep that dirt from falling in the hole. So what that's called is the need for shoring. I have to shore up the dirt, and I have to hold the dirt back. At the same time, I build the hole. That's the trick of shoring. So the Palo Alto Hotel has a, a very tight site. Here's the parcel map that shows the properties. Actually, there's two parcels along the street, El Camino. Doesn't really show that much. But we'll go to a drawing that shows a little more, which shows the existing site constraints. So we have, here's the property. This shows all the existing old little structures on it. And you can see the old parking stripes. And what you see here is a, the four corners of the property. Here's the property line here along the edge. And adjacent to it, you see a building structure here. And you see a very long one here, apartment complex. And then you see a building over here. So you have a very tight site constraint in which we're going to and here it is superimposed. So this is turned, but you, this is the large apartment building in the back, buildings on the side. And you can see the shape of the hotel superimposed on top of the property, and that there's very little room to dig a hole with slopes to facilitate the dirt not falling in the hole without shoring. So here's the site plan, kind of hard to read, but that's the principle behind it. So inside the site, under the building, Here's the parking garage. So the parking garage literally fits under the entire building. You can see the columns. You can see the parking spaces. And the entire perimeter is the basement wall that I talked about earlier, if you want to call this a basement, that holds back the dirt. Unfortunately, we can't go beyond this point with digging out a hole for a bigger tarmac, if you will, to allow the site to slope. We have to keep it constrained and therefore put shoring in. So within this. And I'll show you a section through the building. Uh, here's the ground line. Uh, make believe that's the house I had drawn earlier. These are the floors above for the hotel. And these are, these are the 
parking garage floors underneath the ground. The ground has this symbology of dirt, and you can see that the dirt goes right up against the vertical edges of the wall. Obviously, when it's finished, it looks like that. But when we build the garage, it's going to stay that way, so we have to hold the dirt back, thus the shoring. And you can see the basement wall, which we've talked about a few times. And then you'll see these eye shapes, which are basically eye beams driven down vertically in the ground, used as columns, for lack of a better word. And they're not, and in this case, they're actually not driven. There's different ways of doing this, but to make a long story short, they're structural elements. In this case, they're encased in concrete. So the column's put down in a tube that's set, to, and it's filled with concrete, so you create this very strong column in the ground that goes all the way down to the lowest part of where the hole is going to be. So you've driven this column down under the dirt, through the dirt, down into the ground, before you take the dirt out of the ground. So that's what's very important. I'm building these columns in the ground to create a wall that we build upside down, the reverse of what you build a house, and I'll explain that. And these columns ultimately stay in the ground forever. They stay there. They're permanent. They don't go away. So if we look more closely at the plan where I showed you those columns, here's the exterior wall at the corner of the building. Here are those columns that are going in the ground. And what it shows ultimately is the end product, the concrete wall. And there's another picture of the same thing. So what I'll do is go to, uh, actually, there's a blow up of a column in the circle, the concrete. And you'll see here that there's these, the skinny wall, which is a temporary wall that's being built on the side of the columns going upside down from the top down. So you start to build the wall from the top down. And as you do that, you excavate the dirt. And I'll explain that on the wall a little better. And then we can come back to the uh, ultimately the section here that shows here's the permanent wall of the basement, and here's the round cylinder, here's the steel column, and here's boards that become shoring boards or a fake wall. And it, they're actually built from the top down. And as you're building them, you start, you excavate dirt. So, I'll go. so I first put a column in the ground here. And at this point, there's dirt all around the column, understanding that I've got to take this dirt this part of the dirt out. So I put the column in, and as I, what I start to do is I take some of this dirt away, and ultimately I build sort of a panelized wall of wood, like a fence. And as I'm building that fence, I'm taking away layers of dirt as I'm building down. So really, the, the diagram is building the fence, taking out building the fence, taking the dirt out, building the fence, taking the dirt out, building the fence, taking the dirt out, until I get all the way down, which gives me the ability to clear all of this dirt out of the ground. And I've got, effectively, a fence wall there. So with that, after that fence wall is there, I've got one side of a form for the permanent concrete wall. So what happens is the other side of the form is set. The, the reinforcing steel is put inside, and that's filled up with concrete. And that's the wall that, we've been, that I've been showing all along that goes around the perimeter. That's the basement wall. So it's an upside down process, but first you've got to get the, the piles, if you will, the, the structure in the ground, build the fence, build a form, pour the concrete, and you're doing the shoring as you go down, upside down against gravity. That's shoring. And at the end of the day, all the dirt on the outside stays where it was, not needing this cutback slope.